Hi, Matthew Swinnemer here with Collicut Energy. We are in our second episode of this series, and this series is called Understanding Power. This is a really foundational series, really discovering and discussing the concepts of energy and power and how we generate and how we do power, uh, specifically here in North America. Uh, today's topic is understanding the different forms of energy, and we're gonna get into this topic right away. And so what are the different forms of energy? Well, you'll see on the screen that there's four different types that we're gonna compare. Firstly is electricity, and uh, we're pretty much looking at this from the perspective of Alberta. You'll have Alberta costs, Alberta CO2 output per kilowatt hour, but these numbers are very much indicative of other areas and other jurisdictions, and they can easily be changed if you're interested in seeing what it's like for an area like, for example, California, or upstate New York, or anywhere like that, we can absolutely update them and send them over to you. But we're comparing them against natural gas, diesel, and propane. And you'll see what we've done is, if you look at the third line down, is that we've normalized all of the standard units of, of uh, measurement of these, and we've compared them back to kilowatt hours, so that we're, we're comparing apples to apples. And so you'll see that one gigajoule of, of gas, which is equal to about one MMBTU of gas, or an MCF of gas, whatever unit you're familiar with, it's equal to about 278 kilowatt hours of energy. A one liter of diesel is equal to about 11 kilowatt hours of diesel. And a liter of propane is equal to about 7.1 kilowatt hours of energy. Um, let's look at the cost of these different forms of energy. So first thing you're gonna notice is that electricity, diesel, and propane, they're relatively the same price, about eight to 14 cents a kilowatt hour, relatively similar. Then look at natural gas. Natural gas is somewhere in the range of 0.5 to 0.8 cents a kilowatt hour. That is an entire order of magnitude less than the other forms of energy. It's incredibly cheap in comparison. Now let's look at CO2 output. Now again, electricity, we're comparing electricity generated here in Alberta, which is relatively more dirty than other jurisdictions. So an average kilowatt hour of power here in Alberta produces 0.53 kilograms of CO2, whereas natural gas produces 0.189. In California, power produces 0.2 to 0.25 uh, kilograms of CO2 per kilowatt hour. So to heat your house using natural gas is actually more sustainable in California than, than using electricity to heat your home. Now, why is natural gas so much cheaper per kilowatt hour than these other forms of energy? Well, the reason is, is because in the last few years, there has been an absolute excess of supply due to production increases. And as a result, price has dramatically dropped. And we're not seeing that changing anytime soon. There is such a prolific uh, supply and storage of natural gas. So that's one of the reasons why it is so, so cheap. The other reason is, is because it's such a dense volume of energy stored within every unit of natural gas. So now that we've looked at those four different scenarios, let's actually put some practical applications out there to see how these different energy sources compare in their cost and their sustainability. Let's use our first example, which we're all familiar with, is boiling a liter of water. Now, we're not talking about just heating it up, we're talking about actually evaporating that entire that entire uh, jar of water that you're seeing on the screen. Now to do that, it requires one kilowatt hour of energy. Now to do that with electricity here in, Calgary, here in Alberta, you would be producing 0.53 kilograms of CO2 to do that. And it would cost you about 12 cents. That doesn't seem like a lot to do that, 12 cents. Now let's look at natural gas. You'd be producing just under 0.2 kilograms to, to uh, boil that off. And it would only cost you actually, if you could believe it, 0.7 cents to do the same thing that cost 12 cents. Now let's look at propane. How many people have gone out in the woods, gone camping, and they use propane to heat their food or heat their water over their camping stove? Well, though it seems to be cost effective, in reality, propane is just as bad as electricity. In fact, it produces a lot more CO2, and it's, it's somewhere in the range of six to seven cents uh, to do the same um, activity that natural gas would have cost 0.7. So again, it's an order of magnitude higher uh, to, uh, to not use natural gas. Let's look at another scenario, which is heating our homes. And here in Canada, uh, we have a northern 
climate in the winter can get very cold. And on average, the average house, the average home dwelling uses about 129 gigajoules of energy per year. So using natural gas, we're actually producing about 6.6 .6 tons of CO2 to, to provide that heat. And we're spending about $290 a year, which is rather affordable. Now, if you look at electricity, to do that same amount of that same amount of energy, we'd actually end up producing 18.9 tons of CO2, and it would actually cost us a whopping $4,296. That's almost 20 times the price. So that has a significant impact on the affordability of energy. Let's go to the third option, which is more of an industrial application. And this is an analysis we actually did for a client here in Western Canada. They use about 50,000 pounds of steam per hour. And to do that on an average annual basis, they're using 125,000 megawatt hours of energy to produce that steam. Now to use natural gas, they would spend about a million dollars and produce about 23,000 tons of CO2. If you were to electrify that load and use electricity here in Alberta, in the current scenario, you would be producing about 66,000 tons of CO2, and it would cost that facility $14.9 million to do that. Again, that's 14 or 15 times the price to use, than to use natural gas. So you'll see how electrification has significant cost implications, and quite frankly, it actually has sustainability implications using our current setup. I want to also talk to the concept of energy poverty. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't talk about, but in reality, there are places in our country and places in the world where the cost of energy has actually gotten so expensive, if you can believe it, that people are actually struggling to pay their bills. Now, the, the definition of energy poverty is where someone struggles to be able to pay um, or their, the cost of their, their electricity to either, or the cost of energy to heat their home or cool their home is dramatically above the rate of inflation of other uh, household items. And so what you can see on the screen is that in Canada, approximately 2.8 million people are actually defined as being energy impoverished. And now you'll notice on the screen that Western Canada, energy is relatively cheap and that's a function of the fact that we produce a lot of natural gas in Western Canada, but also our power is relatively cheap. When you compare that against Eastern Canada, you'll actually see a lot of jurisdictions and areas where power has actually become very expensive. Um, and there's, there's many reasons associated with that. I'm not going to get into that topic here. But energy poverty is actually becoming a real thing. And it's something that we're going to see more of as energy continues to increase in price. So my name is Matthew Swinnemer. I hope you've enjoyed this video. There's a lot of content that we went through there. If you have any questions or you want something highlighted more, happy to do that. Send me a note. Send me a, give me a call. Send me a note on LinkedIn. Thank you very much and have a great day.